complicated. If you have private impressions, pictures, or so on, I would suggest use this at not higher education phrase, you know, the one which is going to be underlined, and post it on your page because then it will be directly on the respective site as well. Or if you want to post it on a university site or so on, if possible. If you want to do it the other way around, we can talk about it privately. Um, for the flip charts, please think um, about the five minutes presentations. We have unfortunately not too much time for that. Um, and the pictures which have been taken at the registration will be printed and added to the flip charts in order to, um, you know, if you think ah, you, you saw a colleague yesterday, I don't remember her name, to quickly check who he is and so on. Um, if someone didn't take a photo, please let us know to um, do it afterwards. Um, I was also asked to quickly inform you about the lunch. It's not outside where the coffee break uh, took place, but upstairs. And that for the dinner and the reception tonight, everybody will be picked up at the lobby of the hotel, El Niman, um, at 6 p.m. And we go there together by the red taxi um, to the Luan Kao Lam restaurant. And as most of you know, we don't have a reception or a dinner together every day. For this case, we will hand you out the per diem um, and we will try to organize it after lunch. So make sure you get your money there and maybe think about how long you stay and when your arrival and departure date was. Um, I um, concerning the reports that you have to submit on the 7th of August, could you please send them as um, Word documents and not PDF, that we can format them afterwards with the logo and EU things and stuff. Thanks. Okay, thank you. And that's it from our side. Hello everybody, so I use this mic. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for inviting me. I'll try to give an overview, an introduction to uh, transdisciplinary research. What is basically transdisciplinary research? I think if, if we want to keep it very short, very short, we can say it's doing research together with and for people, with people and for people. This, co this combination is very important. What we have is, is, a, is a combination of different disciplines and added to this an involvement of people from outside, from outside academia. So we have on the one, one hand a combination or working together of people from different fields, from di different academic fields, which is already very hard to do, if you want to really do it, plus an engagement with just plain folks, with people from the uh, popular, normal populace, with NGO people, or with just uh, plain citizens. I think uh, transdisciplinary research is a real challenge and I think the first challenge for non-English speakers or non-English native speakers is the very term transdisciplinary research. So what I will do in this talk is just to speak of TDR, so that's to keep it simple. Uh, I said uh, TDR is a real challenge uh, and there are many opportunities and constraints, many pros and cons. And what is on the pro side? I think on the pro side, first and foremost, it may be fun. It may be sanuk because you are doing research not alone, but together with people. Yeah, and I think that may be real fun. Uh, and then it also, I think, has a huge potential uh, First, uh, for science, if science will be uh, for humans, to make science more humanly, and also for more effective research, if you want to get out things you don't know already, from the side and from the perspective of the people involved. But, there is also a but. I think uh, TDR is very hard to accomplish. It may be often wishful thinking, 
And I think the involvement of non-academics is most important. And the involvement of non-academics doesn't mean only to interview people. Yeah, if you only interview local people, that's mainstream social science research in sociology or anthropology or whatsoever. But really to involve them, for example, also involving them for the very decision, what are the main important things we want to know and what, for what we want to know that. And the second uh, con or the second problem is, as I see it, there is an, uh, the added danger that uh, TDR is currently a little bit a fashion. And that's also, I think, one reason why the EU uh, promoted these uh, projects. So there are many fancy terms, and uh, I have the impression that everyone seems to like TDR, and if every, anyone likes a thing, I'm always a little bit critical. And I think we, it's a real endeavor here, and we should be also critical. And if I may well, we'll make one remark, I, uh, as, as I say, if you should be critical, I should it be myself also. I think that the uh, EU people didn't show up here. Show up here is also not so quite nice. Yeah. Okay. The rest of my talk will be come in three parts. Part one is on basics, what we all know about science, or what we think we know about science. The second will be on basics on trans transdisciplinary research, what are the basic assumptions and aims. And the third point will be on what I call sources of um, TDR. So what I won't give you is a history of TDR because it's a, it would be a, such a, so, a short history, but elements we can use, uh, what I call sources, are sometimes quite older. It goes back to the at least 1960s or 1950s even. So that uh, are my three parts. And uh, as you already see, I'll give you not a PowerPoint presentation. I like to present uh, or to prepare PowerPoint presentations, but I decided as explicitly for that because we could use it already for um, a sort of exercise. And the exercise would be taking notes yeah, and hearing to the, to the words and not only see some words which are already written. And that's a basic uh, capacity we need in our field trips, yeah, to listen to people and to write, note down the important points. Okay, the challenge for me here that a TDR is in principle by the very basic it's um, adapted to local interests. So if I want to generalize about TDR, it's a little bit hard to generalize because it is important that um, we refer to local circumstances. And uh, what, I pre uh, what I used uh, for the preparation of that talk is literature about TDR, but also I tried to include, uh, and thank, thank you to all of us for your assignments, what you uh, reacted to the three texts. I uh, proposed to read them and uh, that you do questions about that, and I tried to integrate that. Okay, I come to my basic, uh, my first uh, part that will be about science, disciplines, studies versus sciences, and also a little bit on area studies. So I could call it two or th three things I know about science, or at least I think I know about science. Scientific research is about knowledge seeking. It's not about uh, seeking answers to deep questions. So I think science is a different thing from religion. Science is oriented towards intersubjective knowledge. And so we are not looking for Western or non-Western or whatever knowledge, but for a general knowledge. But it should not be equated with wisdom. That implies that science is an ongoing process and there will never be final truth. And that's, by the way, one of the um, things which are different from religion. The next point is about science. Science is not, about only, uh, not only about empirical research. I'm saying that because what we are doing here will be basically empirically oriented, but philosophy is also a science uh, and it's different from religion. Intersubjective knowledge seeking is uh, seeking universal knowledge and that's not uh, as often is 
it's only a Western thing, at least if you th see that scientific principles were also uh, developed in many non-Western uh, civilizations, uh, for example in Thailand and Vietnam, and uh, that some of the so-called Western principles of science are now general principles, uh, universal principles. If TDR uh, contains the word disciplines, okay, disciplines are parts of sciences. They are mostly de uh, defined by topics and by methods. But the main point is disciplines are institutionalized. And the institutionalization is very, very different, for example, even within Germany or within Austria. Uh, but it's also very, very different uh, between the countries. For example, in my, uh, my uh, discipline, anthropology or cultural anthropology, has uh, alone five different names in Germany, and it's um, headed with very different names in other countries. So the uh, systematics uh, of science is often very unsystematic, and it has grown historically, and that makes also some problems. Um, then the next point about studies versus sciences, there's a sort of dualism in talking about, uh, for example, um, uh, several sciences like sociology, for example. And then there's a, there's a talk of studies, for example, in cultural studies. So the basic division is science, for example, in, for English-speaking uh, people, mostly science in the strict sense of the term is natural science. But uh, in the more general term, like in Germany, science, Wissenschaft, that means would be mean all the sciences, including the humanities. But in the last years, especially in European and, uh, countries and in, uh, in the North American sphere, uh, there is a development of these studies, like cultural studies, gender studies, and so on, and so on studies. And that already is more linked to humanities, but not wholly. And even single disciplines, for example, sociology, you have some sociologists who would be more oriented uh, towards a scientific, let's say quantitative approach, whereas other, the minority of sociologists, especially in uh, Western countries, are more qualitatively oriented, which would lean them more towards humanities. Schalt das noch, das Mikro, oder? Ich habe den Eindruck, das schalt ein bisschen. Yeah, okay, but that's not enough before nature. Okay. Um, and the next small point in this first part is about area studies because there is some uh, uncertainty. Often, area uh, studies is not country studies. For example, you have Thai studies in European countries or in the United States that would be uh, oriented towards Thailand, Thai literature, Thai culture. But if we sp speak of area studies, that is oriented toward larger cultural realms, like for example Southeast Asia. So we have Southeast Asian studies, or we have, uh, for example, East Asian studies, or Middle American studies. And uh, that already includes often an element of interdisciplinary research research because, for example, teaching Southeast Asian studies in Germany, the, the professors or docents who are teaching that have not studied themselves Southeast Asian studies because it's a very new field. But they started with, like myself, anthropology or as sociology or as, uh, as agrarian scientists or they're coming from literature studies. So they are coming themselves from different disciplines and now are trying to form a regional or area studies, which is called Southeast Asian studies. But the methodology and the theory has yet to be developed at the current state of affairs is more a, a lumping together of different uh, approaches. And so there is no unified theory and you, no unified methods. A side remark, a problem I see from uh, looking from Germany to Southeast Asia and Southeast Asian studies is, is that we often in Germany, but even in uh, also in Asian countries, we talk about Southeast Asian studies, but what we do in the end, for example, is that I'm studying, uh, I'm making research on Indonesia, that Indonesian colleagues study Indonesia. But you won't find many Indonesian colleagues study uh, problems or topics in Cambodia or Laos or Vietnam, and vice versa. So I think as truly Southeast Asian studies has yet to be developed. Okay, in Singapore we might have some traces of that, but it's also a spe specific kind of approach. So that would be my uh, first part, and I'm coming now to uh, more uh, to the core of the matter, to trend, uh, to TDR. 
First and foremost, I think TDR is not the same as multidisciplinary uh, uh, research or as interdisciplinary research. I'm saying that because you already already probably know that. But if you uh, if you communicate to other people, they often would uh, treat TDR as a synonym uh, synonymous with um, uh, interdisciplinary. So we could say multidisciplinary. That would be a sort of added model. For example. If you combine sociology with literary study, but you combine it in an added, uh, added way and not make a synthesis. Interdisciplinary study would be a little bit more integrated. It's a combination of several disciplines where, where there is an integration. For example, if you uh, think of political ecology, that would be a combination, uh, sort of, uh, political economy and, let's say, human ecology. That is more an integrated uh, approach. In some part, at least in Europe, uh, there is also a talk of strong interdisciplinarity. Strong interdisciplinarity would be if you combine humanities with sciences. For example, sociology with biology, explicitly. And in the political ecology, you have already that a little bit. If we talk of transdisciplinary research, TDR, it would mean that we not only combine people from diff different disciplines, which is already a hard thing to do, and it's very seldom, as I see it, very seldomly really realized. It would be co a combination of this, these two, the, or these disciplines, with um, non-academic practitioners. And the next point, it would be explicitly solution-oriented. Explicitly solution-oriented um, to uh, that we try to develop knowledge which really solves problem for stakeholders on that later. And that involves that you balance different, different interests, different people with different interests. And in other formulations, it is an involvement of all sectors of society. Yeah. So, for example, if we would do a political ecology approach and explicitly, which is often not done, and explicitly involve uh, just plain folks uh, into the study and not taking them only as interview partners. Often it, in texts about TDR, for example, in these three texts, it is um, uh, to, uh, there is a mention of knowledge production and I think this term is very good but it's not only taking knowledge or taking data but producing together with people, with ordinary people, with just brain folks, producing knowledge together. What are the main fields where TDR is currently used if you see the literature and the literature really has increased in the last years dramatically but it may be also an effect that's a little bit of fat and science financing. The, the main fields I have found uh, mo mostly uh, texts about, uh, let's say, programmatical texts or realizations of TDR research are first sustainability research, then, and overlapping with that, to development research, and then three, urban research, especially urban planning or participatory or urban planning, and fourth, um, uh, no, uh, studies about local knowledge or sometimes called it indig indigenous knowledge. And now I come, I've also mentioned some problems, uh, but I come to, um, I think, what is the main problem? What are stakeholders? Um, often it said, okay, that are these people or groups, people, individuals or collectives who have a shared pro problem, a shared problem which should be addressed by this research. For example, in one definition it was uh, defined as an individual group or organization who may affect, be affected by, or perceive itself to be effective by, uh, affected by a decision, activity, or outcome of a project. You see already how complicated it is. I, I repeat, an individual group or organization who may affect, be affected, or perceive itself to be affected by a decision, activity, or outcome of a project that was a definition related to some, for example, a development project. So we might think about what might be alternative 
to this, uh, this term uh, stakeholder, I think there are two or three alternatives. One would be arena. It's a metaphor metaphorical term. If we talk of an arena, you can think of different people or different parties, different groups, who have different interests, but probably a similar level of power. Another thing would be another alternative, another option would be political arena. That would, be, would assume that you have different parties with different interests, but also with different power. And that would uh, stress the political aspect here. Another interesting, probably a little bit specific concept, but what I found interesting is what uh, Norman Long, a, dis a development sociologist, call, calls interfaces, and he defines interfaces as an organized entity of interlocking relationships and intentionalities. And his idea is that these interfaces are the points, the so-called rich points of social science, of uh, engaged social science, these interfaces which often involved conflicts. Why are non-academics so important in this concepts of TDR? The first is, the first point is, I think, TDR is about real world problems. And so, if we want to do research about real Prob uh, world problems, we should incorporate the experience of normal people. And, and, they, and also uh, involve, and that's the most important point, involve or use their knowledge, what's of local knowledge. And this uh, local knowledge is often tasted, not formally conveyed, not easily to be transferred into words or numbers. And so to integrate this local knowledge, it's a very hard uh, thing to do. The next reason why um, non-academics are so important is that we want to do science, but we want to do science for people. So it's also about uh, things of empower empowerment and about the question, what should be achieved? And not only what should be achieved by the scientific work, but what should be uh, achieved as a social or political goal. So we also need what is in, as by some people called target knowledge. What people know about their own aims. Yeah, that's not like a knowledge about the uh, environment or the knowledge about the living, uh, living situation or economy, but the knowledge among people about what they want to achieve, which is often uh, distributed in an uh, unequal way. And t taking these together, and uh, I'm using sometimes some metaphors which I think are productive, uh, some uh, people uh, said that we are in battlefields of knowledge. And these battlefields of knowledge imply that we are not talking about an assumed reality only where we want to do be research about, uh, do research about, but that there are different knowledge corpora incorporated, and these knowledge corpora are often not on the same uh, power level. So what might be our approach taking the uh, issue again of these stakeholders if we take into account what I said about the, um, the alternatives and the role of non-academics? I think the, we should be clear that um, stakeholder is a metaphor which basically comes from business ethics or business talk on organizational science and that might be also a a clue to why it's so often used, stakeholders, often without being explained. So I think we should be critical about that. We can use that word, but always with a, with a critical uh, consciousness about that, uh, because the very term stakeholders, at least for me, seems to imply, oh, there is a nice family, yeah, and um, we have the same interests, and let's be nice together, and if we work together, it's all good. But think of the real family, yeah, and that would be make you critical about that. And uh, I think, in and if we take the stakeholder approach, we are already here in that stakeholder approach in that uh, that very meeting here. 
And the methods I will talk later, uh, some days later, are linked to these concepts. And the methods no, should not be used. OK, we use a nice method. It, it's probably easy or produces nice figures. But we should link the methods and the choice of the method to the approach and to what, uh, uh, what the stakeholders tell us about that. Uh, and one very good principle about the linking of methods to TDR is what you could call optimal ignorance. Optimal ignorance. We should only seek this knowledge and so much knowledge which is needed in the end for the aim. And I'm telling that because it's totally contra contradictory to dissertation writing. Yeah, for example, where you are asked to be, uh, a com uh, uh, you, you give the whole overview of theories and lots of data and so on. But this research we are aiming here is really solution oriented, problem oriented. And so I think the uh, good motto for the methods uh, should be optimal ignorance. I'm now coming after these remarks about um, TDR. To, uh, to different sources or what you could call elements of TDR. And uh, what, I'm, uh, what I want to, would like to uh, repeat, TDR is about real problems. And it's uh, involving disciplines and non-academics and it's oriented towards solutions. So science for society and science with society. And since a society as such doesn't exist, it's the, uh, it's the involvement of different societal actors. And uh, in giving you these uh, seven sources of se uh, uh, seven elements, what I will do it, I will uh, shortly explain them and then give examples and end with a sort of motto or slogans. And these seven approaches will be, I uh, um, give a list first. First, applied science or applied research. Second, team research. Third, collaborative research. Fourth, action research. Fifth, participatory research. Sixth, citizen science. And last not least, seven, knowledge transfer or dissemination. That will be the seven elements. And as I said, um, I d did decide not to give a historical overview. The historical basis of these different approaches uh, are very different in history. And I take them as real sources in a sort of Baukasten. Was it, what is a ba yeah, toolbox? Or something. What is a Baukasten in English? OK. <laughs> yeah. Toolbox, yeah. OK, thank you. OK, first, applied science, applied research. Applied science or applied research is problem-solving oriented research with real-world problems. So for example, taking societal topics, it's not about sociological problems, but it's about social problems or societal problems. Because many sociological problems might be very interesting for sociologists, this, but probably not relevant for people. I'll give you an example. For example, applied anthropologists in the United States. If, the, for example, in Los Angeles, uh, you have uh, anthropologists from university, and they work part-time in a medical NGO in Los Angeles, which cares for refugees from Southeast Asia because they have some symptoms, medical symptoms, illnesses, pains, which are not so easily understandable. And they have their knowledge. Uh, they are Southeast Asian trained anthropologists. And so they might have some knowledge about that. So um, this example shows that applied science is about the application of theory, existing knowledge, or, or, or also methods but not only no existing knowledge, but also theory and methods for uh, relevant research. So it's not the case that intrinsic value is important or some sort of contemplative research, but this challenge is to make solution-oriented research. And often uh, it's so that it's not only about the problem analysis, but about the solution. So there is a primacy of practice, and you have a society policy interface. 
Uh, side remark, for example, in the, uh, interesting it is that in some countries, like in the United States and also in some parts of Australia, for example, in anthropology, you have not only applied anthropologists who have still a relation to the university, but you have a whole bunch, and it's about 3,000 people in the United States, who call themselves practicing anthropologists, who have studied anthropology, but totally moved to the practical sphere, and they never would publish in American anthropologists or uh, uh, current anthropology academic journals because that's not their relevance, fr frame of relevance. They have moved totally, but as scientists, to the practice sphere. That's, for example, in Germany not existing at all. What would be the motto? The mot motto could be, science is for all of us, and the method slogan uh, 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 attached to that also this optimal ignorance. Second source, team research. For example, three migration researchers from Konkan University in Thailand worked together with Lao colleagues on Lao-Thai interaction spheres and interaction problems that could be monodiscipline. That's not, not, that mustn't be many disciplines. That could be thai, uh, many researchers from different institutions but from the same disciplines. But mostly it's about uh, working together of, from several disciplines. Uh, this re team research mustn't be automatically problem or but it is often practically oriented. And the motto could be simple, or the slogan could be very simple, four eyes see more than two, and six see more than four. The next would be collaborative research, which from the very wording seems totally similar to team research. But if you read uh, programmatic texts on collaborative research, and especially if you read real realizations, implementations of that, you see that, uh, that collaboration research often involves more interaction, more close interaction, and it's more politically charged, it's more working together for one aim, and so the aim has to be eliminated. Often it's science, uh, scientists of different disciplines, and collaborative research has an element which, which is very linked to TDR because it's often involved scientists and citizens in a joint problem solving. For example, um, Oliver once cited an example of a citizen research group in uh, Bonner-related research, and um, they are doing collaborative research and often the question there is okay collaboration but c collaboration with whom for example if we would uh, would have a study about as we do in bonn about textile workers in cambodia especially about women workers in the, in the cambodian textile industry and if you want to make a politically oriented research the question is often do you really want to collaborate with all the people or do you want to collaborate only with parts of them or several specific groups or specific uh, stakeholders. The slogan could be together we are stronger but the question is what this together means. The fourth, uh, uh, the fourth source we could use for our work here and also use in the field trips but also programmatically is action research. The core of action research is that you get out something from the reali reality which you don't already know by changing the reality, which is totally contradictory to ordinary research which often tries not to influence the object or not to influence the social situation. But action research would be the, or is it totally opposite of that. So you change the existing reality or the existing object to reveal something which you won't get out by other ways. For example, you change something and learn from the effect of, for example, the change it is instituted. I give an example. For, for example, in developing research, if you have development sociologists who work for a local development initiative, and they, for example, and it's about communication, and they install local radio stations in order 
to look at the effects of this installment of radio, local radio st stations to get knowledge about the effects and that's not the aim but the aim is to learn about this is a situation which you won't find out by only contemplative or distance oriented learning about um, the topic. So mostly it's uh, to understand and improve the world by changing it. Uh, there are different ways of action research. You could do this action research without any practical aim, only to get more knowledge. You could do that. But most approaches in action research follow this methodological principle and have the aim of making situations better. I give you an, uh, another example where that was very um, e extensively and also intensively developed. That would be that uh, some American ant uh, cultural anthropologists, they were engaged with Indian populations, uh, not from India, but North American Indian native populations or First Nations. And what they, of what they did as uh, action anthropologists, they let themselves be hired by Indian populations and then together with them change the social situation in order to learn about the problems of the interaction with these Indian groups and the American bureaucracy for example. And then the next step, the, uh, Indian, uh, the Indians hired these anthropologists to function in lawsuits in order that they provide for example the, uh, the information that the people already use that land since 300 years but they have no papers but I can act as an anthropologist, as an expert witness. But I'm hired by these people and not by the university, yeah? the, as an example. It might be an extreme example, but it is an example. So the motto would be what Mao Zedong said. If you want to understand an apple, don't look at it. Bite, bite it, yeah? Eat it, bite it. Change the reality to reveal the inner structures of the apple. Okay, you have a kernel there. Yeah. Yeah, a fifth and a little bit similar, but also a little bit different, is what is called participatory research that's very much used, especially in some circles of development agencies uh, since the 1990s. In participatory research, people are involved. They are also deciding about the topics, the very topics we want to do research. For example, we did the three topics of, of our project. We didn't ask people, but we did, decided it as academics. And uh, participatory research often uh, implements empirical methods. It's oriented, and that's what's, I think, suitable for us here. It's oriented towards short time period, short time research. And the main idea of, is of participatory research is do use methods which are adapted to the people or understandable to the people. I give an example, for example, what um, we are not here in India, but the example is so simple. You know the Indian chapati bread, and you can do, go to an Indian, uh, Indian village. Okay, let's do a chapati diagrams about the main problems you see, for example, as a women group here in Tamil Nadu. And then you make chapati diagrams using the, 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 uh, the size of these different uh, breads in showing like a, like, a, like a normal diagram but using these breads because the people are adapted to think in breads and eat breads, these round breads. Yeah? So that would be an example. The uh, assumption is participants are subjects not objects. What is very important that the people themselves have an ownership in the, in the knowledge products which are produced. Legitimi legitimacy and uh, accountability are very um, important in that. And there is a, a bunch of um, different approaches which I only now uh, give you as uh, short um, names. But uh, in order to, uh, to um, imply that there is also a, d a developed methodology behind these approaches. One would be, and the most well known is RRA, Rapid Rural Appraisal, Rapid, yeah, Rapid Rural Appraisal. What is Rapid? Rapid is not the, the usual one year anthropology fieldwork, but Rapid could be two weeks. But the problem is already there. The two weeks are often only a visit of three. 
days, and two days are used for saying hello and making some feast, and uh, often it's shortened to a, a very, very short phase. Okay, that's repertory reprisal. Then there is participatory oct action research, which combines participatory research and the action research principles which I laid out. And then uh, there is a new uh, approach, which is participatory learning approach, which more implies that the scientists want to learn from the people and not only tell them something. And often this PLA approach, participatory learning approach, involves cycles of, for example, plan, act, observe, reflect, plan again, act, and so on, in a circular way and not in a monolinear way. The slogan is, the general slogan could be, let's say, handing over the stick. Yeah? Also, please, uh, if you uh, try to begin such a participatory project, wait. And even if it shall be very, uh, very fast, you have to wait and listen and not act into the, in, into the social situation. And the most well-known slogan, I think, is putting people first. Putting people first, for example, uh, several authors. The next uh, and penultimate would be number six, citizen science. That's not so well known. Citizen science is if ordinary citizens or just plain folks seek for data, seek for information, which is then used uh, by scientists. For example, if you would have a group of uh, people here in Chiang Mai, for example, you uh, have some laymen who are, who are, uh, which are interested in ornithology, in birds. And the university department, I would assume, has not enough money to make a real collection and um, inventory of all the birds here in Chiang Mai. And you can use these people as amateur scientists, and they seek data, probably a little bit in interaction with ornithologists, profis, and they seek data, and they are used and making for an environmentally oriented um, inventory of birds in Chiang Mai, and the, re the result would be Chiang Mai has more birds than any city on this planet, probably, hopefully. Okay. Um, the motto would be laymen may be scientists or even not only maybe laymen are amateur scientists because we as human beings in generally are information seeking organisms and if you have some amateur scientists who as a hobby scientist are interested in some thing you can use them and that's especially used in some American and European cities but also, for example, now in Shanghai or Singapore, to use an, uh, an, uh, city planning, involve the people using their knowledge, but by that way also engaging them in scientific work, uh, and they then can transmit it to other people. So, um, I think the citizen science is especially important because if we are seeking knowledge about some areas, some spatial, some spaces, some areas, you have to assume that the people living in these spaces have a sort of distributed knowledge in an unequal way. But if you bring this distributed knowledge together, you will be more than even a very well-funded project only run by professional scientists. And I already mentioned the uh, word dissemination because citizen science could be good for dissemination of scientific problems. My last uh, point would be, or last source we could use for our endeavor here is knowledge transfer. That is tra the transport of knowledge first to other sciences, which is already very important. Take the examples of cultural uh, anthropologists as I am uh, for example, if I talk with sociologists, that's probably the nearest, nearest discipline, but even talking to a sociologist, I have to adapt to his vocabulary, and it's not only about vocabulary, but about the concepts behind that. If a sociologist talks of culture of, or of society, he or she might mean as different aspects of reality than I 
um, as an anthropologist. And by the way, if you have a bunch of anthropologists, the problem is even <laughs> probably uh, larger. Um, so, but what is here important, that it's not only about the transfer of knowledge to other disciplines, but the dissemination of knowledge to a wider audience. And that's more and more important in especially Western universities, but also, as I know, in some uh, Southeast Asian universities, because our very funding will be more and more dependent on showing who we are, what we do, and if what we do is really relevant to anyone. But in our project here, I think it's uh, important that we disseminate the knowledge gained together with these people, back to these people, and also back to other people to extend this knowledge. For example, we are doing uh, now uh, field trips in eight, eight locales, but what about the other locales who could also be chosen, who might be similar in several dimensions? Um, this knowledge transfer is not very well institutionalized, but probably you know one of the most important scientists, for example, Richard Dawkins, the bi evolutionary biologist. He has a professorship called for the a professorship for the public understanding of science. And for example, in the UK and in Australia, Canada, some parts of the United States, that is very much um, institutionalized. Whereas, for example, in Germany almost not at all about Austria and Czech Republic, I don't know. Knowledge transfer is not easy because it requires short, shorting, shorting, and it will require simplification. And uh, that's often what scientists don't like and what the supervisors of scientists also often don't like. For example, I know that some German professors at least implicitly assume that a 500-page PhD uh, dissertation is principally better than the 200 pages. Uh, and I think that's not, that's not the case. Um, knowledge transfer is not necessarily linked with a change attitude. But nevertheless, the, the point is here, we want to have an intensive uh, interface between, between science and politics. And for that, uh, it, it is very important to talk about what we do. Um, uh, by the way, what I'm doing just now is a sort of knowledge transfer, or at least I try it. Power relations are involved. It's, uh, we have uh, politicized uh, topics. And um, yeah, I think the last would be just very sh briefly to sum up what is uh, TDR and what is TDR not, or explicitly not. TDR is about many disciplines. It's about involving non-academics and not only as data sources. And it's about very important real-world problems, yeah, and not scientific uh, problems. What TDR should not be, it should not be just interdisciplinary research in an added way, not integrated. And TDR for sure is not easy. And it should not be superficial research. And it also sh should not be a, just a new fashionable term for things we we already know. And uh, at least it should not be an add-on approach to received ways of doing research. On the pro side, I said, it's a huge challenge and it's, I think, a very interesting thing. And we are here to try that. And the EU gave us the money for that. That's good. But we have now to really fill it with human content. Thank you. Yeah, as time was short, the problem is now, um, Michaela, where are you? Shall we allow at least very short reaction yeah, or I not? Think that's of course. I only ask you, no, no participatory. <laughs> so I say yes. You are, you are the I would say yes. Short? Only short. Yeah. Short statements. Uh, not only questions, the short statements, but really short. And I will not answer just statements. Or try not to answer. Statements, remarks, critiques, and also if you have a 
like a, on a, a psychoanalytic setting, you can say all. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, at the beginning, you said that uh, science is about knowledge seeking and not about answer seeking. And then, but then you also said transdisciplinarity is about solution, finding solutions. So how do you see the difference between seeking for answers and seeking for solutions? Can you maybe? Then I may, uh, and then I was too quick. It, uh, it's about answers. It is. But uh, what I want to say, it's about really knowledge and not, not only about action. Okay. Yeah, if you speak of TBR, it should contain that we don't know yet. Yeah. We will. Yeah. You did not seem to mention about uh, empowerment. Yeah. How I mentioned it short. Yeah, short. how about uh, TDR? How is it related to empowerment? Particularly, you want to deal yeah. with the okay, uh, stakeholder? Okay, yeah. uh, between TDR and empowerment. I think TDR, as it's proposed in many of these texts, also in three, these three texts, but in many others, uh, even more, it's, uh, it's not about empowerment, it's often about yeah, arranging research in new ways, but very um, business oriented. But and that's why I would stress that point. If we are here together, I think what we are interested in is in empowerment of the people, in making them more capable to make their own decisions using knowledge which is gained together. But probably in specific circumstances, we may be not all of the same opinion on that. But I think in more generally, I would but, but in, I would in, that point. In the South, you talk about South. Yeah. In, in, in the case of, uh, <coughs> I'm not, I think in the case of Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand, or Burma, it's uh, research of, I would, would like to see how TDR is linked to towards more empowerment because we are talking about people in equality. Yeah. Yeah, and the very notion that we uh, took as one of our topics inequality should give us a sort of thrust that we really follow this empowerment of this, uh, you could also say, as the political dimension involved in that because empowerment means that you talk of people which have different access to power, different access to resources. Uh, could you kindly give any problem, particularly problem that TDR solved in reality and how it worked? Yeah, uh, that's, that's a really hard, hard question. Uh, did, did you already hear it? Yeah. Uh, we, which real problems were already solved? I think the most texts still are very programmatic. But if you look into um, climate modeling research, for example, you have very general models and with lots, uh, lots of fo formal, formal background. But for example, climate research related to specific locales in Southeast Asia, for example, in South Vietnam or in the Philippines, they already try to involve the knowledge that local people have about their experiences with climate sh change effects for example, in uh, islands in Oceania or in, in the Philippines. And they try to link these data gained with these people together with more formal approaches. Yeah? And so that would be an example. But if you would ask me hard, I could not provide 10 very good examples, just by the way. Yeah. It might be an indicator how hard that is. Yeah. You also mentioned about that, uh, the interface from uh, Norman Long. So I, I would ask you about how we can deal with the interface in the, uh, in the, uh, in the interdisciplinary research. Uh, could we apply uh, some his theory also from Norman Long, such as uh, actor-oriented actor abroad yeah. to deal with that? Yeah, uh, interface, Norman Long. If you think on our field trip number one to this canal, I take that example because it's closest to us, especially. Uh, there is a certain history in this canal and the problems related to the canal and the, uh, we know something about the people who are living there through several generations. And so the interface approach would say, let's look at the interactions between the different 
inter, uh, inter, uh, the interface, it would be the interaction planes between different actors throughout the time. And then probably it would come out that there are typical interfaces which, which give us rich points to do more research on, on, these, uh, on these problems and not just make a long list of probably hundreds of problems and then say, okay, we never will come to an end. But find the relevant points using the interfaces, the, the interaction uh, planes throughout this short but history. Yeah. I got a question concerning the arena of non-academics because you just provided us with a transfer of knowledge concerning transdisciplinary research. How were they in, um, informed about it or involved, not involved, but informed about what is transdisciplinarity? How do you, what are the aims and the goals and dimensions of transdisciplinary research? I didn't get your first sentence oh. about arena. No, <laughs> I, um, I said that my question concerns yeah. the non-academics and how they um, were introduced to, uh, uh, to transdisciplinary research. Yeah, I think that's one of the very uh, important points because if, if, if you ask for, for example for an introduction for the, uh, for the first situation, we should assume that these stakeholders or partners already have an assumption of who we are they know uh, that there will drivers come and translators come and they come from Chiang Mai University and they will, they will have an assumption about us. And so we should also talk to them about their assumptions. But also we should be ourselves, for example, it would be good if any one of us would we have a photo of our family and so on, so that we can um, present our own positionality a little bit to them and then explain them to them. For example, I'll give you an example. I made an urban research in Indonesia, and it was a totally mixed urban quarter. It was ethnically mixed and also socio-economically mixed. So I couldn't go to the, the uh, leader and say, I'm an anthropologist, I want to uh, write a thick book about that, okay, and then he says to the people, okay, because there was no leader who was accepted. So I had to go to any individual house or to introduce myself, but in different ways according to the, in that way, educational level. And so also we have to take, if you want to introduce you to these people, you already have to know, to use your knowledge about them and assume that they have assumptions about you. Not really. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, one more question. In the, pro in the case of knots, um, the because there's not academics in the field trips. How are they informed about participating in our NOTS project? Like, were they informed about transdisciplinarity? I can't answer that, okay. but that is a very important question, and probably we should uh, prop up that again if we are talking later today about okay. the field trips. I think that is a very important. And if you if you take into account what I just said, that they have assumptions of us, we should know how they were related already to yeah. us. Thank you. Very good. Please. Can I say maybe two more statements? Yeah. Do we have enough time for the lunch? Yeah. Yeah. I have one question about the element of TDR that you mentioned about number five, uh, participatory research and citizen science. So I think there's some overlap. Uh, between two elements, because my my understanding from your speech about this is um, the participatory research is uh, you try to uh, help everybody join to the research in the short term, a short term, and also the citizen science. You also try to find the information from the citizen. So also one kind of participating. Yeah. So I, I would like to okay. know more yeah, about that. To make it more clearer, the citizen science is really basically about data gathering. Yeah. And you use many people who are already interested in that. The participatory research is more oriented towards participating the people, not only using the, they as, as data providers, but as also uh, partners who uh, show uh, not also their knowledge, but also what they intend 
to change in their uh, societal field. And um, it uh, must not incorporate all people. But for example, uh, participatory research was often used, for example, in Indian, in India, in Indian uh, context. And if you are interested, for example, in women's problems in a southern Indian village, you make a group, for example, only of women, or only of elder women, or only of younger women, because they provi provide a perspective which you won't get if you let participate everyone. So participatory, I was not clear enough at that point, does not mean you that all are in, but you have selected group, for example, group discussions and make a chart about the history of the village or what are mo our most important problems as women in a violent, man-violent society and so on. One more? Yeah, you select, Michaela uh, can select, uh, yeah. speak together in one voice. <laughs> Maybe, but... Yeah. I should take minorities first, that would be... He's a male, minority. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, thank you. I have a question then. Is it possible to divide a uh, transdisciplinary research into different levels? As you mentioned, uh, because a real transdisciplinary research is really difficult to carry out in reality. Yeah. I think you could, uh, t uh, you could um, understand it uh, that transdisciplinary research is uh, the most hard thing to do in a variety of approaches which I mentioned some that, but that it's, more, it's the most challenging thing and that's really that's why I said uh, it may be wishful thinking so we have really to try it out and I gave a short answer and now you are thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah I really have to interfere sorry. because there were more hands around I'm really sorry Nora and I also want to highlight here Maybe we should have um, said that in advance. All the discussion sessions we have in the agenda are for exactly these questions. So please stick to them, don't forget them. You will have a lot of chances to talk about these topics. And um, bring in your assignments, answer, the answers to your assignments. Yeah, the assignments and also Bring in your own knowledge. That's also th maybe a, a point we should be aware of. It's not only consuming knowledge and so on. So bring in your own experience and knowledge and so on. Um, in terms of time, um, is everything, okay, everybody okay with 50 minutes of lunch? In s or should we stick to the 60? Because we are already... Um, 15. 50, five, zero. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> one, also, we have um, one hour and 15 minutes for lunch. Um, I please also, not only for today, um, but for the rest of the summer school and the, the field trip, try to be punctual. Meaning being here at 9 o'clock and not starting at the hotel at 9 o'clock and so on. It saves a lot of energy for everybody, and it's also for the higher tasks of getting the idea of what is happening here. Thank you and enjoy. <laughs>